Chapter 4 Buried Eyes flying open to stare at his plain white ceiling, Wilbur knew exactly where he needed to go. The forest. That's where Tommy was. Since that first morning when he'd found Tommy's body, the forest had been calling to him, watching him, waiting to see if he would figure out what secrets it held. Wilbur hadn't wanted to get near it, and even now the thought of going there made his heart leap into his throat. But none of that mattered. If he was right and Tommy was there, he was going to tear that whole fucking place apart to get him back. Wilbur didn't bother making himself coffee this time. He scrambled out of bed, not even bothering to check the time as he threw some clothes on and snatched his keys off the counter. Before he left, though, he grabbed his neck to make sure the necklace was still there. The metal was cool against his flushed hand. The crown pendant was a comforting weight, and Wilbur breathed a sigh of relief before stepping out of his front door. It was still raining from the day before. Fat, icy raindrops rolled down his sweater as he made his way through the parking lot and to his car. The sky above his head was a roiling mess of dark gray clouds, and in the distance, Wilbur could see lightning flashing on the horizon. This storm was going to be a bad one. Hopefully, he could get Tommy out before it hit. As he drove the familiar route to the forest, Wilbur picked up his phone with one hand and glanced at the screen briefly to pick out a familiar contact. He pressed the call button and held the phone up to his ear as he used his other hand to change lanes. Wilbur? Quackity's confused voice answered after a few rings. Quackity, hey man, glad you picked up. Wilbur started without preamble. I'm having a hard time remembering all those stories we used to tell each other about the forest. Can you remind me of them? W Wilbur, what the fuck? It's like ten in the morning. Why do you need to know about the forest? I can't really explain. I just need to remember what we used to say about it. Wilbur said, his heart pounding in his ears. There was silence on the other end for a moment. Quackity, please. Wilbur pleaded. That seemed to do the trick, because after another few beats, he heard Quackity sigh. Fine, but you owe me an explanation later, Soot. Quackity told him. I know I mentioned this the other day, but we used to say shit like, if you went into the forest after dark and pissed off a certain tree, the ground would swallow you whole. Also, if you entered the forest a second time after pissing the tree off, it would mark you for death. Wilbur nodded. Yeah, I remember that. What was the stuff about connecting people? Quackity paused, and Wilbur could imagine his frown as he tried to remember the same story Wilbur could only vaguely recall. It was some shit like, if you enter the forest with someone else, and only one of you comes out, the one left behind will show up in your dreams. Shit. That sounded familiar, all right. Was there anything else? Maybe, like, why the forest would try to eat people, or whatever the fuck? Man, I don't fucking know! Quackity exclaimed. Will, seriously, why the hell do you need to know this stuff? Are you planning on taking a scary tour of the forest or something? Something like that. Wilbur said, already reaching for the hang-up button. Thanks, Quackity, I owe you one. Wait, Will- Quackity's voice was cut off as Wilbur ended the call. While Wilbur still wasn't sure what exactly was going on with the forest, and how it related to Tommy showing up in his dreams, it seemed like the stories they had passed around between sips of vodka as teenagers was more true than any of them originally thought. Wilbur thought about the whole being marked for death thing that came with a second visit to the forest. Maybe that should scare him. Maybe he was marked for death and if he entered that forest again, he wouldn't come out but he couldn't bring himself. All he could think about was Tommy, about his best friend, his brother, being trapped in there somehow. He had made a promise to find Tommy. Wilbur wasn't going to break that promise. As he turned off the highway and onto the dirt road that led to the forest parking lot, he brought a hand up to rub at the pendant again. It was then another memory flashed in his mind. 
salt-laden wind whipped at his hair, making Wilbur curse under his breath as he struggled to light his cigarette. The sun had set long ago. Wilbur hadn't been able to sleep, so he'd found himself wandering to the beach to watch the waves until he got tired. The ocean's rhythmic roar and pull lulled him into a sense of calm he normally couldn't find. It quieted his mind, giving him space to breathe just for a moment. As he finally got the flame to catch, he lit the cigarette, slumping down further against the sand as the familiar bitterness washed over his tongue. He watched the gray smoke curl up in small plumes in front of his face, reaching up to the twinkling stars above his head. Wilbur hated this town. Every second he spent here made him feel more and more like a stranger in his own skin. Like he was living past his own expiration date. Like he was supposed to leave long ago, but now he'd missed his time slot and was stuck in a state of perpetual limbo. But the stars? Wilbur would never tire of the stars here. Suddenly, there were shuffling footsteps beside him. Wilbur glanced to his left to see a teenager crouching down next to him. Hey man, mind if I bum one of those off of you? The teenager asked. He was young, probably only sixteen or seventeen at the most. Curly blonde hair was ruffled by the ocean breeze, and even in the dark gloom of night, Wilbur could see he had bright blue eyes, illuminated by the moon above their heads. You're too young to be smoking, Wilbur told him even though he'd picked up his own cigarette habit when he was sixteen. The boy scowled at that. Fuck off! I'm plenty old enough to smoke a damn cigarette! Wilbur huffed and shook his head. Trust me, kid, you don't want this habit. It's just a drain on your wallet and nothing good comes from it. Then why the hell do you do it? The boy asked, fully sitting down on the sand. Because I didn't have anyone to tell me not to when I was your age. Wilbur explained, taking another long drag and blowing it out towards the sea. Why do you want to smoke anyway? The only time I smoked when I was a kid was when I was hanging out with my friends. The boy's scowl faded into something more akin to embarrassment, and he shrugged as he stared at the sand. I don't know. Just seems like something to do. A distraction. The kid wanted a distraction. Considering he was at the beach in the middle of the night, it wasn't out of left field for Wilbur to assume the kid was struggling with something. Maybe it was a fight he had with his parents. Maybe he got dumped. Or maybe he was just in one of those moods all teenagers get in, where it feels like you're being buried alive by the weight of all the expectations placed on your shoulders. And nothing you can say or do will stop the crushing pressure of time from suffocating you. Either way, Wilbur understood. He understood that feeling all too well. I'm Wilbur. What's your name? Wilbur asked, taking one last drag of a cigarette before stomping it out with his boot into the sand. The kid shrugged. Tommy. Do your parents know you're out this late? Tommy scowled again, and Wilbur wondered if that was his default expression. They don't care where I am. I could stay out all night and they wouldn't say anything. Sympathy panged in his chest for Tommy. But at the same time, he was also worried at how easily he had given Wilbur, a complete stranger, the knowledge that no one was looking for him. You shouldn't tell strangers that, Wilbur told him, folding his hands in front of him. Don't they teach you stranger danger shit like that in school? Tommy snorted. If you want to try and kidnap me, you can but I'll fucking bite you. Wilbur let out a startled laugh at this. The fuck are you? A raccoon? Maybe. Tommy shot back, a genuine smile flickering over his face now. For all you know, I could have rabies. More laughter rattled through Wilbur's chest again, and he tried to remember the last time someone had made him laugh like that. How about instead of you giving me rabies... We walk down to the corner store over there where there are more people around, and I'll buy you a can of soda or something. Wilbur offered. Tommy frowned, suspicion suddenly clouding his gaze. Why? Because you look like you need a distraction, and I think I could use one too. 
Wilbur explained, pushing to his feet. He held out a hand towards Tommy, a silent offer. Tommy stared at the hand for a moment. Then, he took it. And that was that. Wilbur reached the forest parking lot with the taste of that cigarette still lingering in his mouth. He remembered that after they'd left the beach, the two had gone to the corner store and Wilbur had bought them both snacks. They'd sat at one of the benches outside the store, drinking and eating while they chatted about their lives. They'd gone their separate ways after that, but the very next day, Tommy had waltzed right into the diner, eyes going wide when he saw Wilbur behind the counter. After that, he'd made it a point to come into the diner regularly to bother Wilbur during his shifts. But it wasn't exactly bothersome, because Wilbur had looked forward to chatting with Tommy while he worked. From there, the rest was history. Staring at the forest through his car windshield, Wilbur could feel that same tugging in his chest he'd felt before. Something was pulling him towards the trees and their shadows. Something wanted him to go inside, to let himself be swallowed by the darkness. The pendant was warm against his chest. Although looking at the forest head-on made the fog return to his mind, holding on to the pendant helped clear it away once more. Wilbur climbed out of the car. He stopped fighting against the tugging, instead letting his feet lead him away from the parking lot and towards a dirt path that led into the trees. Raindrops were still falling against his head, plastering his hair to his forehead and soaking his sweater till the fabric clung uncomfortably to his body. When he stepped onto the dirt path, the smell of wet earth filled his nose again, just like when he had hugged Tommy in the dream. Ignoring the anxiety racing through his veins like electricity, Wilbur let himself be pulled into the forest. The forest itself wasn't as ominous on the inside as it seemed from the outside. Spindly tree branches covered in bushy, dark leaves sheltered Wilbur from the worst of the rain. His boots squished against damp leaves, and pale light from the clouds above filtered in from the canopy above his head. The tugging in his chest urged him to go deeper. He reached the end of the main trail, but kept walking anyway. Thorny bushes caught his pant legs, but he kept walking, refusing to turn around because he was getting closer. He could feel it. It was like there was an invisible string tied around his chest, one that had been pulling on him for the past week, and now it was finally starting to go slack. The pressure was lessening, and Wilbur kept a firm grip on the pendant in his hand as the forest around him got darker and darker. Leaves rustled in the wind, like whispers he wasn't supposed to hear. If Wilbur didn't focus too much on the sounds, he could have sworn the breeze actually sounded like real voices. Incoherent, breathy voices that seemed to be asking him something. Begging him, even. As the invisible string got more and more slack... Wilbur remembered the last time he'd been in this forest. Wilbur, come on! We gotta go further in! Tommy yelled, hopping between the bushes and ducking under tree branches. I still don't understand why we're in here, Wilbur said, frowning as he narrowly avoided getting smacked in the face with another branch. I told you, this place creeps me out. Well, it doesn't creep me out, Tommy declared with a wide grin. I don't know how to explain it, Will, but it wants me here. I can feel it. Maybe that's not a good thing? Wilbur suggested, trying to keep his voice level, even as his heart rate picked up. He didn't believe in all those scary stories about the forest. They were just folk tales made up to scare the freshmen. It was ridiculous for him to be nervous about being in the forest, but unease itched at his skin. This place was wrong. Tommy, I think we should head back. Wilbur called out, noticing Tommy was far ahead of him now. Stop being such a pussy, Wilbur! Tommy teased, jumping onto the large, tentacle-like roots of a gnarled oak tree. This place is awesome! Wilbur clenched his jaw. Tommy, please, we need to go. Tommy huffed and hopped off the tree roots. If you're gonna be such a big baby, then just stay here. 
No, I'm not leaving you alone in here. Wilbur argued, taking another step through the bushes. Relax. I see a clearing up ahead. I'm just going to go check it out and I'll be right back. Tommy reassured him. Before Wilbur could protest this, Tommy was already sprinting ahead, disappearing into the shadows between the tree trunks. Wilbur, who was panting from trying to avoid stepping into thorny bushes, frowned and kept trudging forward. He reached the oak tree, leaning against the trunk to take a breather as he searched for Tommy's bright golden hair in the distance. He could distantly hear Tommy's laughter, and the sound of branches being crushed under shoes. Listening to the sounds of Tommy running ahead, Wilbur tried to remind himself it was okay. It was just a forest. Nothing more, nothing less. As long as Tommy didn't get attacked by a damn wolf or something, they'd be fine. Suddenly, there was a scream. Wilbur! Tommy shouted. It wasn't the joyful or teasing shouts Tommy had been yelling out before. No, this time, Tommy's voice was edged with panic. Pure, unfiltered panic. Tommy? Wilbur yelled back, pushing off the tree and running in the direction Tommy had disappeared in. Where are you? I'm over here! Tommy called, his voice echoing between the trees. Help, it's Help, it's fucking got me! I'm coming, Tommy! Wilbur shouted, running through the trees as fast as he could. His heart was pounding in his ears. His lungs were burning, and branches whipped across his face. He could taste blood on his tongue, and his panic was so encompassing it was like a vice had wrapped around his chest. Wilbur, please! Tommy's cries were getting muffled now, and Wilbur's head was spinning as he tried to figure out where his voice was coming from. It was like Tommy's voice was being echoed in the wind. He sounded like he was to Wilbur's right, but also behind him, but also in front of him. Wilbur whipped his head around, trying to figure out where the hell Tommy had gone. Tommy? Where are you? Help! Help! Tommy shouted again, this time from Wilbur's left. It's going to be- it's going to be He was cut off, mid-sentence. Wilbur's heart dropped into his stomach. Tommy! Wilbur shouted, moving to the left. Somehow, it was as if the forest had gotten darker, the branches hanging lower than they had before. Tommy, where are you? There was no response. Wilbur ran face first into a low-hanging branch. He yelped when he felt it cut across his cheek, and when he brought his hand up to his face, he could see there was blood on his fingertips. Shit, where the hell was he? Wilbur's head whipped around, trying to figure out what direction he was going in. He needed to find where he went. He needed to find... Wait, who was he looking for? Pausing, Wilbur frowned as he stared at his hands, eyeing the blood smeared across his palms. He had been looking for someone. He had come to the forest with someone, and now they were gone and he was... The fog descended on his mind like a blanket. It wrapped his thoughts in cotton, slowing him down until he was struggling to remember how he'd even gotten to the forest in the first place. He wasn't supposed to be here. Why the hell had he come here again? Wilbur caught his breath, twisting his fingers in his hair as he tried to think of why he'd come to the forest. He hated the forest. Always had. It made no sense for him to be here. He should leave, before something bad happened. In a daze, Wilbur turned and headed back in the direction of the dirt path. There was something nagging in the back of his mind, telling him that he was forgetting something important. But the harder he tried to focus on what he was missing, the quicker his thoughts slipped between his fingers. It was like trying to grab water. An impossible task that just made him more and more frustrated the more it went on. That night, Wilbur would drive home to his apartment in a haze. He would pass out in bed and wake up early the next morning before the sun rose. When he got up to make himself coffee, he would have the strangest urge to watch the sunrise at the beach. Stopping in his tracks, Wilbur gasped as the memories flashed through his mind. That next morning was when he'd found Tommy's body. Something had been telling him to go to the beach, but the more he thought about it, 
the more he realized it had been telling him to go to the forest. Wilbur's subconscious had been trying to get him to go back for Tommy this whole time. Wilbur had just been too stupid to realize it until now. Well, I'm back now. Wilbur whispered, and he wasn't sure who he was speaking to. Was it to the wind, still whispering please in his ears? Was it to Tommy, who he could just feel was somewhere nearby? Or was it to the forest itself, telling it that its plan hadn't worked? Wilbur had come back for Tommy, and he wouldn't be leaving without his little brother. Maybe it was all three. Or maybe Wilbur was just talking to himself. He really wasn't sure anymore. He kept walking. It was strange. Wilbur could feel the forest trying to make fog descend over his mind. His thoughts kept bouncing around in strange directions, urging him to go back the way he came, to question why he was doing this when he already hated the forest so much. But then he'd squeeze the pendant, and Tommy's face would flash in his mind again. He was here for Tommy. That was the one thing he couldn't forget. He promised. Soon, Wilbur could see the gnarled oak tree from before, the one that teenagers had always said was cursed, the one Tommy had jumped on before running off towards the clearing, only to disappear into thin air. The tugging stopped. The invisible string fell to the ground, leaving Wilbur without any sense for where he should go from here. Lay down. The wind whispered into his ears. Rest, Rest your eyes. Strangely enough, Wilbur's eyes were growing heavy again the longer he stood in the forest. Kneeling down, he pressed his hand against the moss and dirt, and felt a steady thump, thump, thump against his palm. Tommy's heart beat. Tommy was nearby, and if Wilbur wanted to find out where he was, he was probably going to have to talk to him again. Although he was nervous that if he fell asleep here, He'd be swallowed up by the moss and dirt and never come up for air. The pendant clutched in his hand helped calm his racing heart. The crown would keep him safe. He had to trust that, because he was at a dead end, and something was pulling his limbs down, 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 begging him to close his eyes and sleep. Resting his head on the soft moss, Wilbur ran his fingers over the warm metal of the pendant, a few scattered raindrops made it through the canopy of leaves above him, and Wilbur fell asleep to the cool drops hitting his cheeks. Wilbur opened his eyes, and he was back on the beach. They were right next to the border between the sand and the dirt of the forest now. Tommy was still sitting in the waves, but Wilbur could see other things about him now that he hadn't been able to see before. There was dirt streaked across his cheeks and caked under his nails. Delicate, springy flowers were blooming from his arms and hair. When he let out a shaky breath, Wilbur could hear leaves rustle in time with it. How do I find you? Wilbur asked, grabbing Tommy by the shoulders and turning him to meet his eyes. You're literally so fucking close. I can feel you, Will. Tommy told him, grabbing his wrists with his dirt-covered hands. You just gotta listen for me. Wilbur put a hand on Tommy's chest, feeling the steady thump, thump, thump of his heart. I'm not going to leave you there again, Wilbur said, already feeling himself being tugged back to the waking world. Tommy squeezed his hand. I believe you. Now hurry up and get me out of here. The waves rushed over their legs again, the water was ice cold. Wilbur woke up with a gasp. He bolted upright, feeling weeds and flowers rip off his arms from where they'd been wrapping around him while he slept. The sky above his head was dark now. His clothes were soaked, and he was shivering violently. The rain was still coming down in buckets, and now the wind was no longer a gentle whisper in his ears. Instead, the wind was now howling blowing the warmth straight out of him with a vengeance. He pressed his hand against the dirt again. Sure enough, there was still the steady thump, thump, thump underneath the moss and earth. Stumbling to his feet, 
Wilbur ignored the wind pulling at him, screaming at him to lay down again and let the moss swallow him whole. The necklace was burning hot in his hand now, and he gripped it tightly, letting the pain keep him focused. Wilbur rushed over to the oak tree. There was a patch of wild flowers leading away from the tentacle roots, trailing down the way Tommy had disappeared. Wilbur followed the wild flowers like a path, the heartbeat growing louder in his ears with every step. Finally, he found the clearing. The trees opened up into a dark meadow, with a single tree that looked like it had fallen over decades ago. Moss climbed up the trunk, invading it like a parasite, rotting away the wood until it was pocketed with holes. Stepping out from under the canopy of the trees, more fat raindrops poured down on him. His clothes were already soaked through, so he barely noticed as he knelt down in front of the tree trunk, noticing a strange patch where the pink and yellow wildflowers clustered in front of it. Pressing his hand down on the earth, the heartbeat was louder than ever before. So Wilbur did the only thing he could do. He began to dig. He dug his shaking hands into the warm, wet earth and pulled it out clump by clump. Wildflowers scattered the ground around him like corpses, covered with dirt where Wilbur had ripped them out by the roots. The wind picked up around him. The howling was so loud he could barely hear himself think. It didn't like what he was doing, and was screaming at him to stop, but Wilbur didn't listen to it. Whenever the fog started to creep into the edges of his mind, he gripped the necklace again, and the burn against his palm cleared his head enough for him to continue. He dug. He dug, and he dug, and he dug. His hands were nearly black with how much dirt was on them. His sweater had been gold, but now it was a putrid shade of yellow-brown. It didn't matter. He had to keep digging. His arms ached. His breath was coming out in ragged puffs, but finally, finally, he got a glimpse of something that wasn't just dirt. Bright blue fabric. It was stained by dirt, but Wilbur recognized the sweatshirt Tommy had been wearing that night. He yanked more dirt up. There was one of Tommy's hands, pale and strangely warm, just like it had been in the dream. Tommy? Wilbur asked as he continued to rip up the dirt by where he guessed Tommy's head was. Tommy, can you hear me? He ripped away more flowers, and finally Tommy's face came into view. His cheeks were streaked with mud, and dirt covered his eyes, but it was him. Tommy, Wilbur breathed, reaching a mud-covered hand down to touch Tommy's cheek. Wake up, Toms. You need to get up. For several heart-pounding seconds, Tommy didn't move. Was he dead? Was Wilbur too late, and Tommy had suffocated in the forest? But before his panic could well up inside of him too much, Tommy's eyes flew open, and he lurched upright with a gasp. Wilbur yanked him out of the rest of his burial mound as Tommy began to cough up large clods of dirt. He patted Tommy's back, his heart racing in his ears almost as loudly as the wind howling around them. It's okay, Wilbur reassured him as he hacked up all the dirt in his lungs. I got you, I'm right here. Relief flooded through Wilbur, and it was the sweetest thing he thought he'd ever felt. Tommy was alive. He was alive, he was breathing, and now he was back in Wilbur's arms. His little brother was okay. After nearly a minute of coughing, Tommy finally sucked in a huge gulp of air. When he looked up at Wilbur, his eyes were a brighter shade of blue than Wilbur ever remembered them being. You found me. Tommy whispered in a hoarse voice. I promised you, didn't I? There was a beat of silence as Tommy stared at him in shock. Then he was lunging forward, wrapping his arms around Wilbur's chest, and Wilbur almost laughed as he hugged Tommy back. Wilbur wanted to cry. He actually did end up shedding a few tears as he pulled his little brother close, murmuring, I'm sorry, over and over again as Tommy sobbed into his shirt. They were both covered in mud. The rain was still coming down in buckets on top of their heads. Tommy shivered and curled closer to Wilbur, and Wilbur wrapped him in his arms as best he could. Suddenly, 
there was a deafening crack in the sky. And Wilbur glanced up right as lightning struck one of the trees in the forest not too far from them. Both him and Tommy winced and covered their ears, while the howling wind only got louder. We need to leave, Wilbur said, already struggling to his feet. He pulled Tommy up with him, and Tommy nearly fell over when he put his weight on his legs. Wilbur wrapped an arm around him to hold him upright, and Tommy grimaced as he straightened up. Fucking hell. You get buried alive for a week and suddenly you can't fucking walk. Tommy complained, shaking his head. We can worry about that later. I think we need to get the fuck out of here. Wilbur said, having to shout to be heard over the rain. The pendant was practically burning a hole through Wilbur's shirt now as he dragged Tommy out of the clearing. The wind screamed in his ears, and this time he was able to hear exactly what it was telling him. You can't take him, you can't take him from us. Oh yes I fucking can! Wilbur shouted back, barely ducking in time as a stray branch flew right over his head. They stumbled back into the trees together. It was even worse there with the wind rattling every single tree branch and things flying around them almost like they were in a tornado. Wilbur dragged Tommy back towards the gnarled oak tree, and Wilbur could feel it watching him as the pendant got impossibly hotter. Stopping in front of the oak tree, Wilbur kept Tommy tucked under his arm with one hand while he used the other to yank the pendant off. You want something? Then take this! He yelled at the oak tree. He chucked the necklace into the tangle of roots, and watched it disappear into the shadowy depths in seconds. The wind grew louder, but the fog didn't encroach on his mind again. Let's go, Tommy, Wilbur said, trying to yank him away from the oak tree. Why the fuck are you talking to a tree? Tommy yelled as he stumbled after Wilbur, regaining more of his strength with every second. Because the tree wants you, and I'm not letting it have you. Wilbur shouted back. Tommy's eyes widened as he stared at the tree for a moment. Then he pressed himself against Wilbur again, and didn't fight when Wilbur tugged him back towards the path. The two sprinted down the dirt path, and Wilbur could hear trees crashing down behind them. The necklace might have been enough not to lose his memories again, but the forest had claimed Tommy, and it was pissed it couldn't have him. Wilbur didn't give a shit. He was done giving a shit about this forest. Hell, he was done giving a shit about this entire town. With screaming muscles and aching lungs, the two finally made it out of the forest. Wilbur could see the storm was everywhere now, blowing leaves and branches around the parking lot, and looking out onto the ocean showed Wilbur a wall of darkness, only lit up by the occasional lightning striking over the water. Tommy hopped into the passenger seat of the car, while Wilbur jumped behind the wheel. They were both filthy, and his car was definitely going to be stained after this, but he didn't care. He just turned on the engine, and peeled out of the parking lot at a speed that was definitely illegal, and turned onto the highway without a second thought. Rain pounded on his windshield. Wilbur turned on the wipers and pressed down on the gas. He wanted to get away from the forest as fast as possible. A few minutes passed in silence, both Wilbur and Tommy just panting to catch their breath. When Wilbur realized Tommy was shivering, he turned on the heating full blast, and they both sighed in relief as warmth filled the air. Finally, after a few minutes of driving, Tommy frowned. Why don't we go into your place? Tommy asked, noticing when Wilbur missed his usual highway exit. Wilbur huffed out a bitter laugh. I'm fucking done with this town, aren't you? Tommy gulped and glanced behind them. Through the back windshield, Wilbur could see the dark storm clouds circling above the town. The forest was angry that Tommy had been taken from it, and it seemed like it was going to take its wrath out on the town. Wilbur didn't care. Maybe he should have cared, but he couldn't bring himself to anymore. He was sick of that place. He was sick of the diner, he was sick of his apartment, and he was sick of trying to fit himself into a life he didn't want. That town was a coffin for Wilbur, and it would have been a coffin for Tommy too if he'd stayed there. Wilbur had been afraid of leaving before, 
afraid of change and how it could all go wrong. But he was done being afraid of that type of shit. He had Tommy back, and that was all he needed now. Yeah. Tommy finally agreed after a minute. His voice strangely soft. I'm done with this place. They passed the sign telling them they were at the town limit. Wilbur blasted by it without a second thought, only speeding up as he left his hometown behind him. Phil could take care of himself. That had always been the problem between them, actually. Wilbur needed Phil more than Phil needed him, even if he never wanted to admit it to himself. But now Wilbur was ready to properly leave the nest. After all, if he ever saw that forest again, he might have a full-on mental breakdown. The silence was deafening between him and Tommy, so Wilbur turned up the radio, just to see what was going on. Massive hurricane heading our way. Board your windows and expect severe damage- Wilbur turned off the radio just as fast. He didn't miss the way Tommy shrunk down in his seat at the announcement. Picking up his phone with one hand, Wilbur went to his recent calls and pressed the one he was looking for. Putting the phone on speaker, Tommy frowned as it rang, and Wilbur gave him a reassuring look. Hey Will, how you doing? Nikki answered immediately. Wilbur smiled at the sound of her voice. I'm doing great, actually. Nikki paused for a moment, seemingly surprised. Oh, really? Did you find- I found him. Wilbur finished for her. He's safe with me, and I was actually wondering if I could take you up on that offer to stay with you now. Tonight? Nikki asked, the confusion evident in her tone. Yep, it's a bit last minute, but we wanted to get out of town fast. Wilbur explained, eyeing the lightning flashing behind them. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, that's totally fine. Are you driving up? Yeah, so it'll take us a few hours to get there. Nikki laughed, and it was one of the nicest things Wilbur had heard in days. Of course that's fine. I'll have everything made up for you both when you get here. Thank you, Nikki. Wilbur said, trying to inject as much sincerity into his voice as he could, while warmth flooded his chest. It's no problem, Will. I'm excited to meet Tommy. There was no static anymore, and Wilbur breathed a sigh of relief. I can't wait for you guys to meet too, Wilbur said, glancing at Tommy, who was staring at him with wide eyes. I'm going to go now, but I'll see you soon. Drive safe, Will. And with that, he hung up and put his phone back into his pocket. Nikki's an old friend of mine, Wilbur explained softly to Tommy. She's really nice, and she has a little brother around your age. I think you guys will get along. Tommy glanced back at the town that was growing smaller and smaller behind them. He pursed his lips, blinking a few times as he rubbed more dirt out of his eyes. After a few beats of silence, he nodded. Okay, I trust you, Wilbur. Wilbur flashed him a smile. You better. He teased gently. You're my partner in crime, after all. Tommy's smile was weak but the fact that it was there at all was more than enough for Wilbur. Crime boys on tour. Crime boys on tour. Wilbur repeated, turning back to face the road. With that, Tommy laid his head down on the center console of the car. Wilbur reached over and started carting his fingers through Tommy's hair absentmindedly, gently trying to get the dirt chunks out where he could. At one point... His finger ran across something that wasn't dirt, but also wasn't hair. Glancing down, Wilbur could see a small, white flower blooming from Tommy's head, and he wondered if Tommy knew about it. Wilbur decided not to say anything. That was something they could deal with another day. They had all the time in the world now, after all. <laughs>